have just entered the Katie Ma podcast. Keyboard plus mouse or die. Hey guys, what is going on? And welcome to episode 71 of the KB Mod Podcast. Uh, if you're watching this live, unfortunately, you're not seeing my uh, my beautiful face as my phone goes off because uh, Time Warner sucks massive cock. And uh, <laughs> the fact that I'm even able to look at the stream chat and listen to this right now is impressive. Uh, so it's probably Rishi's fault. He's probably downloading swag. Or something like that. <laughs> There's no, no. There's no hard drive large enough in the world to download swag. <laughs> to has. hold all the swag. Yeah. Rishi disrupts the signal. Yeah, it's, that's possible. But yeah, episode 71. <laughs> uh, Nick is under the weather uh, today, so he's not with us. And Chez will never be on the cast. So let's get those two things out of the way real quick. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's me. It's, uh, it's, it's the core. It's the, I would say it's the core. It sounds the important like, people. Uh, yeah, the people that the actually. Internet, the internet cast. came. The oldest of the school. No, but the oldest, yeah, the oldest school, I guess. This was the original cast, so this is, uh, it's kind of well, it's kind of Brandon, fun. technically, but he was, like, episode eight or something. Yeah, that's so. true. Okay, well. Yeah, I started as a guest. And, then and actually, way, John yeah. wasn't even on this podcast originally. Really? I feel like he I don't was. think I was because on episode I, one. Uh, okay. Yeah, he, I was under the impression when we started it that he didn't want to do another podcast uh, after you yeah, ain't Baby. <laughs> you ain't Chris Baby that I killed after one episode. So and I was like, so. he's not going to do a, want to do a podcast with APL. Yeah. after how that shit went down. Exactly. So. No. <laughs> just killing podcasts left and right. The fact that we're on episode seventy one <laughs> is the true miracle, and then I'm actually hosting it. But uh, what have we what have we been doing this week? What have we been playing? I guess Brandon always ends up. It's interesting that Brandon always ends up in the top left. I don't know if that's. <laughs> Skype ordering in, in like actual importance, or if it's just a fluke, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, that's weird. You're pretty important, Brandon, though, so I'm gonna give well, you the better doubt. Um, <laughs> what you been I, doing? I played so I had a I went to San Antonio this weekend, I had a friend's wedding, so I was just on my laptop, but I got in some more XCOM, I've been playing that some more, and uh, keep I continue to learn things about the game even multiple hours into it. And I learned there was this gray market where I could sell stuff. And I had a bunch of stuff to sell. And so all of a sudden, I had a ton of money. Whereas before, I didn't have like any money to use. So, so you were um, like bottlenecking without cash, and now you have yeah, cash? Yeah, like every because you get, you get money on a monthly basis. Uh, and <laughs> you get money on a monthly basis. And so you're always, you're always struggling t- you know, to get more money to build facilities and stuff, build out your base. And I've been having some trouble with that, uh, but then I found out I could sell some stuff, and all of a sudden I had you know a few hundred credits. Um, so I'm doing like I feel like I'm stronger now. I feel like I'm a little bit, a uh, little bit better equipped to like to take on where I'm at in the game. Um, so I've played that a bit. Uh, I think we were talking last week. We had just bought Orcs Must Die too, right? Was that last week? Yes. Yeah, that was last so week. I played, so I played Orcs Must Die 2 for a bit. That game is really good. Yeah. It is really good. That's one of the best like $4 purchases I've made. Because um, I really like tower defense games, but I normally only play them you know, like on my iPhone or something. Because um, they're really well suited for just kind of touch-based stuff. But, yeah. uh, but Orcs Must Die is really cool. It's like FPS and tower defense mixed together. Yep. Um, so I've been playing that a bit, and um, other than that, I don't know. I, I, like I said, I was out of town this weekend, so um, those two games were really all I played uh, in the little bit of time I had. But it's been good. Sweet. Sweet, yeah. Uh, Orcs Must Die too. I do have that, and I did play a little bit of that, I think. Fenton yeah, I want to play co though, because I, 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 yeah. I haven't gotten a chance to play with anyone, and I feel like that could make that game even better when you're... You know, when you're trying I can't to remember if I bought it or not. I yeah. think you did. I think <laughs> you did, man. I think I did. But we gotta we gotta play some games. Dan's co-op. so lazy to check, he's gonna ask Brandon to go see if his like <laughs> friends that own this is listed. It's like, am I on there? Yeah, oh, I, I have it. I bought it was three seventy or something. <laughs> Rich like, Daniel. Really yeah, I almost wish I would have bought the DLC and stuff too, because that was all discounted. And now that I've actually played it, the the DLC seems kind of worthwhile given how cheap it was. Nice. Yeah, well, I wish I had a lot to add. I, I I did make a commentary earlier this week that I was coming off my league addiction, and it's one of those just I speak right back on yeah, it, speak too soon, where, I, you know, I don't know. I, this, is, this is what's going to happen. Everyone's like, play Dota 2. It's far superior. And uh, I'm open to the possibility that Dota is a better game. It's very possible. 
but uh once i hit once i hit 30 in league i'll go and give dota a try um but i did watch the the no, our north american dota team take on the eu team a little bit on the uh <laughs> on the, it. On How the stream out? and that was bad. just oh my god that was a massacre. They got massacred. Yeah, it yeah. was. It was very poor. They got destroyed. Uh, Nick so. Fenton could not pull the boys together. No, he tried, was, dude. Uh, he made a valiant was, effort. It was uh, Nick Fenton, Dutchie, yeah, Tino's. I only, to be of... honest, I only stayed around for the first game, and the only person that looked like they knew what the fuck oh, they were doing was Tino's. But yeah, Jordan was there too. Yeah, Jordan's, Jordan's very played good like six hundred hours. Yeah, Jordan's very good at Dota. Yeah, I'll tell you what. I've played Dota with Nick Fenton against bots. Yeah. No, <laughs> no. You just said no. I, I mean, waiting. I'm fucking. Ter- I am fucking horrendous at Dota. Okay. Yeah. I'm not a mobile player. I was learning the game completely, yeah. and Nick Fenton died to bots several times. <laughs> so, that's all I'm saying. That sounds about par for the course. He's not here to defend himself. I, of course, died to bots, but I, I got nothing. <laughs> I mean. Yeah. So and I'm never touching it again. That- that I was actually playing, and they were calling me horrible in the chat because this dude named Scott was playing. And I was like, <laughs> and then the casters were like, no, that's not APL Fish. And I was like, thank God. Oh, not the casters? Yeah. Did they have casters? Yeah, there were that's casters, so- dude. It was entertaining. The casters were, oh, dude. were entertaining. I, I bet it was them. Magnus. If Magnus was one of them. Yeah, was, well, Magnus was Maestro. one of them. Yeah. At Magnus Maestro on Twitter, guy. He is a funny guy. So, <laughs> yeah, it was uh, it was pretty entertaining. I didn't stick around for the whole thing after the first slaughter because I was like, "There's no way that this will be any more than two games." But <laughs> it was entertaining. So yeah, so that's all I've been playing. Playing some league and and who who knows? We'll play some Dota at some point. What about uh, what about you, John? You've been playing other than my TF2, uh, TF2. lots lots of uh, Guild Wars two actually. Oh, um, no. A couple of the guys so... I couple of the guys I play with. Uh, on my TFT team have been playing Guild Wars, so I was just like, yeah, sure, I'll load it up again and see if I hate it. And I don't. <laughs> I just I just don't agree with the way it, you know, the way it works. Um, and I've been playing a bit of Planet Side, which is, I, I don't know if I like it or if I just if it's painful. <laughs> I, I don't I don't really know which one it is. I've been playing a couple hours of that, and I installed the. Um, Batman games again, so I want to play through yeah, them. Yeah, I saw, and I want saw to play, you hopping in Arc City. And I want to play through Bioshock 2 again before Infinite, so I installed that as well. So that's my pl- that, that's my activities and my plans. And I also bought a BenQ 120Hz monitor, so now I have three screens for so many activities. <laughs> God, man, you went hard on those monitors. You, you just had to have it after you played on it. Yeah, I had to, I had to own it, so I did. <laughs> yeah. And then I then I went on Skype and I was like Justin I I was talking to Fuzzy I was like I ordered these monitors he's like which ones he's like these ones he's like are they good I was like yeah he's like I just ordered two <laughs> so fucking fucking Fuzzy <laughs> wow he also texted me this morning at like 4 a.m. from a casino in Vegas and he had hit a uh, 1337 yeah, he, jackpot <laughs> yeah he won yeah he was tweeting pictures nice but that that's All right. my Daniel, what of uh, what of your activities consisted um, of besides masturbating and getting wasted? Gone. <laughs> wow, dude. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Sorry, that was I, more uh, for Fenton. But I actually didn't wasted. play that many games this week um, because I uh, put together my home theater PC uh, this week because I got all the parts in. Yeah, I was trying to convince yeah. you to stream that. Yeah, and actually, what happened was it would have been the shortest stream ever. Because it was like the easiest, the months, easiest yeah. PC build I've ever uh, had to do. It was like I'm sorry, Dan, but did you consider the fact that thermal paste application alone takes at least two <laughs> hours? Have you ever watched Brandon put together a PC on stream? Uh, well, I avoided that by just using the uh, the shit that came. Uh, okay, out there. so gotcha. I didn't yeah. you for didn't a low-end PC, the you avoid. Out, yeah, you old. avoid all of that with the stock, the stock heat sink. But it was seriously a uh, pile of boxes to PC in like an hour to like windows seven in an hour mm. like it was nice. it was pretty that's fantastic. pretty fast yeah. yeah like it was uh i used an old case of mine um tech 300 bitches oh lee and lee old, old lee and lee case, which was like it was just like 140 when i bought it because they are they are beautiful cases um brushed aluminum real nice but yeah, I had it lying around, so I used it. But it has, uh, and this is a feature you don't see on that many cases today. Um, 
it has a motherboard tray, removable motherboard tray. Mm. It's just heaven to work with because you just take it out of the case, screw everything on, slide it slide right it back in. in with everything on it. Yeah, that's and cool. And it's in there. So even with took, a, uh, uh, a hyper uh, two twelve. No, well. Yeah, Hyper 212 would fit. It yeah. would be very, very sketchy, though. You know, I do have to take in uh, take a little because uh, I mean that not that that joke uh, isn't old by now. The fact that I had trouble installing <laughs> that, but the fact that Fenton, when he was he was putting together his new PC and tweeted it multiple mm-hmm. times about how frustrated he was with the 212. So, um, just want to point yeah, that out. Not, it's not it's yeah. not a fun heat sink. It's not no. fun. It's definitely no, it's yeah, really doable, not. but but it's worth. It I had for to the put mine savings. in like. Yeah. I had to put mine in like the wrong way to fit it. Like, yeah, yeah. to fit it. I mean, it works great. Like, it, it, the contact and everything was fine. But technically, it was supposed to go the one way, but it, it's going this way instead. Um, but yeah, so I put that together. Put, uh, I was like, you know what? I wanna, I wanna make a second Steam account for this um, in case I want to pick up anything little, um, so my son can use it. And so I installed the based Humble Bundle games, which all have no DRM. So I installed those again on there. So he was playing like Shatter and Bastion and nice. uh, um, Minecraft, of course. Was he ready to start the FPSs? About seven? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, yeah, we'll give him that. <laughs> you got to get that but hand He's going to play, he's gonna gonna play hockey. He needs that coordination. I told, I told my wife he can play anything on there except Binding of Isaac. He can play everything else that I installed on there. Because that game's a little, <laughs> yeah, a little fucked up. It's a little. Um, <laughs> so, but everything else he can do, and they're all nice. <laughs> like we were playing um, Boxatron. Yeah. If you guys have ever played that, um, you just use the arrow keys and. You guys WSA. can do like Minecraft co-op together. Mm. Yeah, he he loves Minecraft, and uh, he put him in creative mode, and he goes. But, uh, yeah, so that's what that's what I did for most of the week. But I play Black Ops Two. Um, I still like it. I didn't play it for a while, but I loaded it up again, and I still like it. Yeah, I'm actually enjoying the process of, like, leveling the guns and stuff, which really haven't before. Or haven't. It's not that I haven't enjoyed it in another CD. I just haven't even... COD, I've never even thought it, about it. It feels but, like more of an accomplishment in Black Ops 2. Like, it yeah. feels like something to work towards rather than something that's going to happen. Well, I like that they were like, if you want the gold camo and shit, you have to, like, play with no perks, no attachments, and stuff like that. Like ridiculously it, sort of annoying but also a cool challenge for you it makes it, it uh, adds an rpg style element like a grind yeah but i've also been playing binding of isaac uh which still playing a lot of that trying to beat it with a different character now um and then i've also uh been playing don't starve which I've is great an interesting little indie game uh which, if you guys didn't see me play it this morning, I played it this morning on stream. It's it's like Minecraft in that you just get thrown into a world and you craft and you survive. Um, but you have a hunger meter, and that's essentially what gets you killed. <laughs> or not. Uh, as the days go on and don't starve, like monsters start to appear, like more and more powerful ones. So you want to be able to get, like, you basically have to tech up. Um, kind of more like an RTS, really than a uh, than Minecraft, but um, it's awesome. <laughs> it's pretty fun. The first time I survived for two days, and that was it. Two two in game days, and then uh, I survived for a whole week this morning because I was using these mandrake root things that put you to sleep for a whole day, but they refill your hunger for like a day and a half. Mandrake. Or Mandragora is used to return those who have been petrified to their original state. It's also quite deadly. The Mandrake's cry is fatal to anyone who hears it. <laughs> but these Mandrakes, um, I didn't know that the the hounds and other monsters in the game would level up every day. And so when I was sleeping through a whole day after cooking uh, a Mandrake... Yeah. I then got to day 10 with, like, no weapons and just got my shit pushed in. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it's pretty cool. It's 11 bucks. My only caveat is, is that the game isn't technically out till March. So they're kind of pulling a Minecraft and saying, pay for our game. And it's on Steam. But it's a beta right now. So if it's not worth your 12 bucks for a game that isn't anywhere near finished, 
then don't get it. But if you like Minecraft, you will like this game. Does it, was it and a green light if, title? I don't even know. I honestly don't even know where it came from. Huh. <laughs> like, I hadn't heard a thing about it until uh, I saw it on a stream. And, uh, yeah. So, yeah, Sweet. that's what I've been <clears throat> playing. Sounds real quick, Dan. Um, how do you how do you like big picture mode with your HTPC? Um, I think it is super good on uh, on a on a TV. Like if you're sitting at couch length away, it's really nice. Um, it's, I mean, for me who doesn't have any apps <laughs> on Steam yet, it's hard to really mm -hmm. give it a whirl. But it definitely makes a ton of sense on a TV. And it definitely makes a ton of sense on a, as like a quote-unquote console for you to use. Mm -hmm. um, you can see where Valve's going, definitely, when you use it. Um, I, would say, I would say if you don't have anything but a TV, I know like all Sham Noel wow played on TV for a really long time. Um, Ginger Bomb, who's been a long-time follower of ours, he played on a TV. I don't know if he still does. But... Uh, so it can be done, and this is a much better interface than the regular Steam library. The only thing is it doesn't default to big picture mode <laughs> half the time, so I have to click on it. But, um, yeah. Cool. So, All right, guys. I think... Ooh, Scott. Oh, yeah, you went through with your plan. Uh, yeah, it's always short these days. So leagues, Scott, leagues I have, on, leagues on. I have premium ESEA. We got to do some pugs. Mm, okay, yeah, yeah. I think I, st God, I think I'm still paying six dollars a month for that or whatever it is. Six fifty. <laughs> Haven't done it in a while. Though. I do have one question. Yeah. On your video you posted, that was some Modern Warfare Two console footage. How old was that? Footage? Oh, that footage or, is uh, like, pfft. oh man. Or did you play recently? Yeah, no. That's that's like that was the first uh, that was the first Modern Warfare Two uh, footage that ever went up on my channel. It's like it's still I that video without commentary <laughs> is up. It's like the fourth video ever. It's like a hundred and thirty something thousand views on it. Uh, so I don't. It was like right after. It was really close after the game came out. Maybe like a couple weeks. So oh, I did forget one before we Scumbag go. I did Scott play monetizes too. the same gameplay two times. That's right. <laughs> uh, actually, I didn't even monetize it though this this time. So you don't have to worry. I did play Dota two with Nick Fenton, and it just affirmed that I just don't like MOBAs very well, much. Well, see, you played it. See, I'm hearing a really key place you went wrong. You played it with Nick <laughs> Fenton. I you feel like yeah, but I just don't. Don't you, Dan? I like Smite because it's not top down and clicky. Mm -hmm. Like that's the killer for me, really. Like the whole time I was just bitching about how I couldn't just have it centered on my dude the whole time. <laughs> like <laughs> I was like, why can't it just follow my guy the whole time? I don't that's know. That's actually how I play it's, League cuz you can center it's just it not in for League. You just hit Y. Yeah, you can. You can in Dota, but you play Logic but you Nick in League, like, Brandon. Wow, you're crazy. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I know, and I'm sure no one plays like that. And I'm Some sure people, people would scream at me for being terrible, yeah. but I can't. I don't know. It makes it easier for me when I'm not having to constantly move my camera around. League, League is not anything remotely the same to how Diablo three plays, except uh, they're both isometric. Like yeah. it's <laughs> that's not the same thing at all. Yeah, yeah, I would agree <laughs> but, with that. No people. Um, I know people that are decent that play lock screen, but most I don't know. Not many. Oh, well, good. You're making me feel better now because I assume people will just trash me for that. I will say Dota Two looks beautiful, like as beautiful as a as a MOBA like that can look graphically. It has everything there, but yeah, <laughs> Brandon not, plays not like that because he doesn't have a lag stopper. That's true. <laughs> That's true. That's true. We now interrupt your scheduled programming to bring you an urgent broadcast from the front lines of America. All right, we are back with the news here. And this first piece of news, Scott may not have a ton to say on, but <laughs> he may be able to interject just on the pure principle I, of the thing. I read it, but yeah. Um, basically, if you guys haven't heard about this, um, there's been some leaked articles <laughs> and some leaked information that Broadwell, which is two steps after ivy bridge so right now we're on ivy bridge haswell's up next and then broadwell is after that these are intel cpu I... architectures if you're completely yeah. lost yeah these are intel cpus so intel is really the last bastion of desktop computing right now um they're the only ones left pretty much Sadly. now the amd is kind of going into shitter but it has come to light that intel is going to start with broadwell sort of putting uh, the chip chip and motherboard uh, all in one PCs, basically. They're so going to the shoulder the CPU down. 
like they yeah. like they currently do with mobile devices and you know and a lot of all in one type things. So the initial cry from everyone was like, "Oh God, this is going to kill you know the gaming PC and the enthusiast PC," um, and it probably is the beginning of the end. That's for sure. Um, but according to uh, some sources <laughs> that I've talked to and some some things. There is still going to be enthusiast chips, but they will be the only chips in Broadwell that will not be soldered on, um, and there will be very few of them. So the way you've built currently will not be the case anymore. Which is fucking um, fantastic, because Brandon can't spend all of his time putting thermal paste on anymore. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The thermal paste goes on top of the CPU. Yeah, maybe they'll fucking... May, yeah, maybe they'll fucking... <laughs> Solder Maybe on they'll a put CPU the CPU fan too. Yeah, <laughs> the whole thing, dude. You just everyone but, has to buy pre-built e machines. That's what happens. But basically, the only reason most of these—I mean, it's how it's done right now. You know, for the most part, is for desktop solutions. But what it's going to look like in the future is, is you're going to have mobile everything, mobile kind of setups, and then servers, and then workstations. So the desktop will become a workstation. Um, which is a workstation now you could say is a very, very high end, powerful desktop, um, like a rendering station or something of that like, um, but yeah, you won't be able to upgrade or change just the CPU anymore. That's the thing. So people who love to overclock, you're, you're kind of out of luck a little bit. And that's, and that's been kind of the uproar from the community. As far as gaming, and maybe Brandon can expand on this more. As far as gaming, I don't think it's going to affect you as a PC gamer very much at all. The performance is still going to be there. Um, but you just won't have that customizability you used to have. Well, I think uh, I think we're going to... I don't know. It seems... So Ars Technica wrote a good article on this because when we were first talking about this, the article... Uh, I think it was first reported <laughs> on semiaccurate.com, which fucking, is not a place I've ever read. What a great name. Can I be uh, honest? Dude, I tried to read the semi-accurate article, and I wanted to... I mean, I'm not a great writer, but that fucking right. I wanted dude, to fucking kill yeah, myself. So I couldn't there, even there follow was, it. Did you like, read the line? You want to talk did about, you you talk about oh. sensationalized headlines. Yeah. The yeah. the headline for their article was Intel kills off the desktop, PCs yeah. go with it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't, I don't think that's really accurate, but Ars Technica wrote a much better piece that kind of explains yeah. what this could mean for the future. And I think you're right, Dan, that it's not it's not gonna have a huge effect on a lot of people that are just interested in gaming because we will have Haswell before it, which ostensibly is going to be yeah. pretty high performance um and you know carry people for a while. Um, the other thing that, that a lot of people have said is that, you know, for, for a lot of us like building our own PCs and we like the fact that everything is modular, but when it comes down to it, not, not a ton of people, because Intel constantly changes sockets, there aren't a lot of people keeping the same motherboard and actually replacing the CPU. A lot of yeah, people will really, replace the CPU yeah. and motherboard at the same time. So I don't think it'll have a huge implication on people that build their own PCs. But the thing that scares me is just the direction. The fact that it's, it's, you know, it's two, two pieces of hardware that are now going to become one. And maybe Intel decides that that's a one-generation thing, which has been rumored that the next generation yeah. they would go back to uh, not soldering the CPU on. But um, it's kind of a scary prospect for that kind of stuff to... to sort of continue v converging into this all-in-one idea. And, and something, right, Scott. something else that, <laughs> that um, I saw brought up that I thought was interesting is um, I think one of the reasons I've seen around uh, soldering the CPU onto the motherboard is that it, it becomes more reliable and that you'll have fewer failures when that kind of stuff can be tested all together and whatever before it leaves the factory. But it also is kind of scary because... If, if you have a problem with your CPU or a problem with your motherboard, now you have to buy them both again. You can't buy them separately. So, and I don't know. This, this also now not even, well, sort of on a gaming and enthusiast level as well, but motherboard companies now yeah. cannot be very pleased. <laughs> um, and how many options are you really going to have? Is this going to be Intel becomes your one-stop shop and... I mean, we've already talked about how shitty it is that Intel is the only desktop chip maker. 
Yeah, left. I think the motherboard makers are going to be but... are going to be really upset because you have motherboards now that are just a single SKU, but if they want to put if they want to use different CPUs across that motherboard line, they're now going to have to have to have multiple SKUs for the same motherboard. I think it's going to create a huge headache for for those vendors. Yeah. So, we'll see where it actually leads. The rumors have put it um and some people I've talked to have said that, yes, there will still be an enthusiast level in Broadwell that will be replaceable, uh, as well as it, it coming back later. So it's not really the death. And this, as far as gaming, as, as I've said, they're not going to go backwards in performance. And these are going to be motherboards. So you're still going to be able to put a GPU on there as far as gaming. But the guys, who this really, really affects is people who constantly switch out things or try to overclock all the time, like people on extreme systems and shit like that. Yeah, people pushing Those people their systems are really that, <laughs> that you know, could potentially be frying CPUs and stuff, the hardcore guys, those guys miss out a lot. Because if you fry your CPU, you've now also, I guess, right. I guess you fried your motherboard because it's no, it's no good anymore. Yeah. So, yeah. But we'll the good thing, it. though, is I think, I think Haswell is going to be huge. I think that Haswell is, is probably going to be the death knell, the actual death knell for AMD on the desktop because it's going to put yep. them so far ahead. So I'm, I'm going to probably be eyeing an upgrade around Haswell time and, Haswell and maybe I can skip out on this Broadwell <laughs> nonsense completely. Yeah, you figure, you we, figure if you get the top tier of CPU, you have about you have a four year cycle or so if you do it correctly. Yeah, and, and that was four, in those four years, AMD is going to be like this, or Intel is going to be like this. Is stupid, and they're just going <laughs> to they should be like we're not doing yeah. this anymore. But I mean, if I had to have a prediction, I would say that that market doesn't get killed off completely simply no. because you're not going to have ASUS AS. Well, AS Rock might be bought by ASUS soon, but. Um, Asus, MSI, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You're not going to have them go out without any some sort of, not even a fight, but some sort of usefulness to a, a Intel or to themselves. There will be some sort of like Broadwell E chip, possibly or something of that ilk that will be expensive, but will be you'll be able to take it take it off the motherboard if you want or install. And it's kind of it's kind of sad too that AMD is in the state it's in because I feel like. I feel like AMD could could kind of make an enthusiast play against Intel here, you know, in a couple of years because AMD traditionally has been pretty enthusiast oriented toward that sort of thing, like keep, you know, uh keeping the same socket compatible with, you know, multiple generations of CPUs and that sort of yeah. thing. It's kind of a shame that AMD really won't even be in this race as far as we can tell. Because you know, it's like once once Intel starts doing little experiments like this, um, that AMD could have a compelling marketing argument to someone like me who doesn't really want my CPU soldered onto my motherboard. And if AMD was comparable, maybe that would make me switch. Yep. So we'll see where it goes, guys. Um, I honestly, until I see Intel putting this out there, we see Broadwell on an actual roadmap with our own eyes. I don't know. I don't know that I fully believe it, but we'll see. Um, but every time we it, talk about Haswell, be... I feel like we're talking about like a DJ, Caswell? Or like, a, oh. a, a, <laughs> like what, like yeah. ice cream truck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But uh, mm. but yeah, we'll see where it goes. As far as gaming, the normal gamers out there should be all right. If you're a big overclocker, your fun just probably went down the tubes a little bit, but. Um, on to some gaming news, and we talked about this. Did we mention it last week or yeah, the week we before? Yeah, we mentioned it last week that we didn't know what so, was coming. Our former boys oh, over yeah. over at oh, Splash yeah. Damage. I cannot wait to go. Um, who, of course, we've mentioned a million times. For those of you, maybe it's your first cast. John, Brandon, and I all were massive, massive Wolfenstein Enemy Territory players, which I believe was Splash Damage's first game, and it was phenomenal. One of the greats of all time. And then they just pretty much put out crap from then on. So we had Quake Wars, and then we had, of Quake course... Quake Wars wasn't terrible, it just wasn't for most people. And people were expecting to get an enemy territory game when they didn't. Yeah, right. It had the name and everything. but <laughs> And then, of course, Brink, which shit on everyone's breakfast um, when that came out. <laughs> and then 
Uh, last week we heard the news that they were going to be announcing something on 11.29. And that announcement has been made now. And it is a new game, which appears to be a free-to-play shooter called Dirty Bomb. Um, I can you hear my sigh? Or that? <laughs> yeah, it was good. So, I mean, the trailer tells you nothing. Pretty much. Can I just say Although, that the, I've never I've watched a few trailers that instill less conf. I mean, I know it's a trailer; you can't put any stock in it. But I was like, "What? The, they're, whatever." I don't know. It totally underwhelmed me. And I do want to point out that in the trailer, they do not make any mention of Brink. Uh, they more go the route of from the developers. <laughs> this is very obvious, and they don't. Yeah, no, it was amazing. Brink. Yeah, from the developers of Wolfenstein Enemy Territory and Enemy Territory: Craig Wars PC. That's it. Not not even a mention of a yeah. fucking multi million dollar game Brink that That's they worked on. That's actually very very telling. Isn't that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? I, I was dying when I was watching it. I mean, they know. Yeah, they know they what know. they did. You know what you did. Um, <laughs> they know. So they anyway, know. I thought that was funny, and I don't know, dude. I was. I was wondering, I was going to ask you guys if you're excited, though, because they're pushing. So I don't know if that quote is just, uh, you know, trying to get goodwill because obviously well, both those games were decent or Wolfenstein was really good. But uh, like if that excites you that they're going to try to bring that kind of style of gameplay back or you just think they're just throwing their laurels around to be like and well, what they've done. This game's using the Unreal Engine, which scares me a little because they haven't yeah. done that. I mean, they're good games. We're yeah. the Quake Engine. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. Enemy Territory was part of the reason it was so good was because of the Quake Engine. I mean, Wolfen mm -hmm. the Wolfenstein franchise for me and the Quake Engine that the, those two, the success of those two things are intertwined. So, mm -hmm. for for it to be an Unreal Engine game and also for it to be a free to play game, uh, it's it's a little bit. I mean, I don't know. Maybe they. I feel like it's free to play because Brink sucks so bad that they were like, we can't ask people to spend sixty dollars on another splash damage title. Well, yeah i mean and it's like, fine I'm serious, it's like, fine that can't. it's free to play it, it's just that you know given that open stuff never... enemy territory was not free to play it was free. right that's that's the thing is that is the enemy territory was just a free game there was no there were no free to play type elements splash damage has never done a free to play game so it kind of concerns me a little bit that it's it's like it's a new ip it's free to play and this it's, trailer, like you said, Scott, it shows me nothing. I think I'm really, watching yeah, this, and there's like teaser. there's literally less than a second worth of actual gameplay footage. Yeah. It's like, it's like yeah. a slashing yeah. to someone shooting a gun. So it doesn't tell yep. me anything about it. Yeah. Uh, teaser trailers have never done anything for me, but this one especially does. This this yeah. does less than nothing for me. Right. I, but you I'm can reserve gonna... your player name now. So I did. Well, well oh, I'm right. in there, dude. <laughs> Tits McGee 14. I did, I did actually deserve. sign up for so. it. I hope I get in the beta. I really, really do. Um, I'll try it. I mean, but I'm, I, you know, I hope play. they don't mess with the Unreal Engine too much. There needs to be air control. If you're making an FPS that has any sort of movement mechanic at all, you need to be able to control yourself in the air. You must be able to strafe and surf. And if you can't, <laughs> your game is a piece of shit. <laughs> that, that's all there is to it. It's terrible. If you're well, making a just, fucking it, PC game and I can't control myself when I'm in the air, your game fucking sucks. The thing is, this this to me, like the fact that it's splash damage and they made enemy territory, that doesn't I don't see the the skills really translating. Like enemy territory was an awesome game, but because it's a new engine, new payment model, and enemy yeah. territory at this point was was years and years and years ago. Like it's basically, it might as well not be splash damage. It could be, it could be some random indie studio making a game called Dirty Bomb, and I would have. They're also have the right. same reaction. That's a good point. They're also publishing it themselves, um, although it doesn't say that it's being published by War Chest, but they own War Chest. Mm. Like War Chest is the publishing arm of Splash Damage, and War Chest does only free to play FPS games. Um, so we'll see if that means they're putting out War Inc. Or, oh, <laughs> or you God. know, Blacklight Retribution, whether they're doing it right or doing it wrong. Um, we'll see. You can't... No, see, people in the chat saying the game looks horrible, you can't even say the game looks horrible. Because there's no game this to look at. This is a marketing there's, thing. It's <laughs> even called Teaser game. Trailer. Yeah. Why companies yeah, even put these that. out, I don't know. Right. Unless it's something, like, just fucking so overwhelmingly badass that you're like... Because uh, once in a while you'll get one of those, but... Every now just, and then you get a Dead Island... But I could have ended this with my penis in Sony Vegas <laughs> yeah, and then, 7. And then the game sucks when it's Dead Island. Yeah. You know? yeah. Well, yeah, that's debatable. Some people game really was like fucking pretty, though. Yeah. 
I'm not saying it sucks, but when it released, it was broken. Yeah, released. It did. yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely yeah. on release. Yeah, the Dead Island like, trailer is still one of the most my favorite. I mean, it's fucking a piece of art, that thing. Yeah. We need to figure so, out how, how teaser trailers equate to the game's quality. I'm sure right. there's a correlation <laughs> there. I'm sure, I'm sure there's a graph that we could look at. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I, I totally agree, Brandon. Your point on, like, this could be put out by anyone. I, I mean, it doesn't really... This doesn't. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see. It's just does. It's not doesn't. The excitement meter on this to me is like a two. Like I don't have any. There's nothing. Yeah. I mean, this that I'm like, oh, I cannot wait to try this out. This is gonna be sweet. <laughs> like whatever. So we'll see. Maybe it'll turn out to be great. I don't know. I hope. I hope for splash damage sake. Yeah. I really do. I mean, they always always have a place in my heart <laughs> for enemy territory. But <laughs> obviously, as Brandon said, Brandon's totally right. It's probably none of the same employees. But yeah, um, excitement but, meter eight point five from IGN. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Um, so up next, speaking of art, there at the end, um, the Museum of Modern Art MoMA in in NYC um, has is putting in a video game section in the museum, which I think is really cool. Uh, it's more to study the design, the design and impact of games, uh, and they're starting out with 14 initial entrants, and they want to have it up to like 40 or 50. I think they're saying. I thought this was really cool because gaming has become uh, mainstream is not even the right word, but such a part of culture now that we can start putting these games and they'll be playable in the museum. Uh, well, we can put them in a museum now and have an entire section <laughs> devoted to them. Yeah. And these first 14, all of which are worthy entrants, um, I'll just go down the list real quick. Not all are PC, but still very relevant. Pac-Man, of course, one of the originals. Um, and then we have Tetris, the original Tetris, 1984, the Russian version. Um, Another World, which I had never heard of and never played, to be honest. <laughs> Uh, Mist, the original Mist. Yeah. I'm probably the only one here who played the original Mist, but oh no, I played it. <clears throat> um, the original Mist was such such a crazy thing to see when it first came out. Those like what was it like 480 by 360 graphics Dude. or something? It was like oh my lord, I blew my little cock <laughs> off back in the day. <laughs> Jesus, fucking... is, that, is that what it did? <laughs> I bought my first boner to Mist. My first computer boner was to Mist. And that old man. <laughs> uh, Minecraft is is being. We'll get to that. Uh, uh, SimCity 2000, one of my all time nice, favorite yeah. games. Vib Ribbon, which I'd never played. It came out in '99, apparently. Um, the Sims, which, regardless of what you think of the Sims series, I know a lot of people who are hardcore gamers who love the original Sims. And uh, it was kind of a game that there was nothing like that. When it came out, where it just simulated people's lives, that was the whole game. Yeah, the and the original so, game itself was was pretty excellent. Yeah. I mean, the fact that they made about fifty million expansion packs after yeah. that, <laughs> you know, they they milked it. But that original game, I mean, I I put a lot of hours into it. I enjoyed it. I mean, people saying like Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid and stuff. I think part of this is also on like design merits and things like behind the scenes programming and stuff that maybe we wouldn't necessarily even understand. Um, for some of these games, but Katamari Damacy, um, Eve Online, cannot deny the hugeness of the accomplishment that is Eve. Uh, it wasn't as big as World of Warcraft, but it certainly was even more complex. And the people who play Eve are fucking insane. Like, <laughs> hardcore Eve players. The developers um, encourage scamming in, like, Ponzi. Yeah. Stuff. It's, it's an incredible thing to see. <laughs> Yeah, it's like there's billions of dollars of economy in EVE Online. Mm. So, uh, Dwarf Fortress, which you've never played it, it's sort of tower defense, but like the game grows organically as you go. Uh, it's kind, it's kind of crazy. Um, Portal, which was a first of its giant. Flow, which I'd never played. Passage, Cannabalt. I'd never heard of those ones either. Um. But other games that they know are going to go in, uh, Pong, Snake, uh, Space Invaders, Asteroids, Zork, Zork and Zork Nemesis, I remember those games, Tempest, Donkey Kong, the original barrel throwing game, Yars Revenge, Mule, Core War, Marble Madness, holy shit, 
Uh, Super Mario Brothers, of course. Legends of Zelda. Street Fighter 2. Chrono Trigger. Underrated game. Chrono the greatest Trigger. of all time. Super Mario 64. Grim Fandango. Which if you've never played, mm. go play. Go get Grim Fandango. Uh, Animal Crossing and Minecraft. Those are some of the ones that they have for uh, for next year. So And Space War, the original video game, 1962. So... It's, I think it's just really cool that, uh, and I wanted to highlight this because um, gaming is no longer sort of the, <laughs> you know, only you geeks and nerds doing it. Although we all are geeks and nerds. <laughs> but, uh, but like, that's, you know, the stereotypes are pretty much gone. We're putting it in the Museum of Modern Art at this point. <laughs> so Yeah, it's cool. That, uh, I mean, it's just another step to video games becoming, I mean, the mainstay that they are in pop culture. And and becoming you know the same, having the same level, the the same the recognition that they have the same level of influence that you know other pieces of art and television and things have you know on our lives. So yeah, really cool. Um, yeah. I'd love to go up there and see the see this exhibit. So yeah, I'd love to go play it. Uh, yeah, and it is really a travesty. You're correct, laughing man. That Barkley shut up and Jam Gaiden is not <laughs> not on this list. Not yet. Um, uh, not yet. Yeah, I think time. it will be there at some point. But <laughs> um, so yeah, you can go check out that list on MoMA's website if you want. <laughs> uh, up next is the newest Tumble Bundle, which. Um, is awesome for one thing thq humble bundle i think it's i don't even know what the minimum is right now but you get metro 2033 red faction armageddon all the company of heroes games um metro 2033 did i say that already yeah and and saints row the third yeah for like if you pay over five dollars 64 cents right now you get saints row the third just really have to dig uh, in your wallets for that five six yeah and and from what I've heard of Saints Row 3, it is worth every penny of 564 and a lot more than that. Yeah. Uh, and I'll tell you myself that Metro is definitely worth that. Metro is an amazing game. Definitely overlooked by a lot of people. But this jackass, Kyle Orland, <laughs> over at Ars Technica. Mm. Let's be clear that he guy, is not the only person with this opinion. You've just chosen to single him out. This fucking guy. I just wanted to All say right. his name, though. Yeah, I know. He, uh... He wrote an article, basically, which was just to get hits. I mean, that was really all it was. Um, saying, basically, that this this bundle could irreparably damage the Humble Bundle's reputation as giving to charity and, like, DRM-free because mm. these games are Steam activation only. Um, therefore, that's DRM. Uh, and he said this could irreparably <laughs> damage the reputation of the Humble Bundle. Come on, dude. No, it can also Come. make people more people realize what the fuck Humble Bundle actually is when they can look on this website and see that's a AAA title that I can pay a dollar for. Yeah. Yeah, dude, Steam is such an impediment to my gaming, dude. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, if I'm a PC gamer, I don't have Steam, though. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I, <laughs> yeah, I kind of see his point. It's like, what PC gamer worth their salt doesn't have Steam? Uh, that's a good point. He even says that in the article. Oh, really? Oh like, well, most people have Steam. But, but... I, I think the I will play devil's advocate though and say that I kind of see his point because um, Je- what's his name? Jeffrey Rosen, I think, the guy that started the Humble Bundle. He's made mm-hmm. comments before that that's you know that, that that's kind of a pillar of the bundle is the DRM free and the cross platform stuff. That's something that that he himself has espoused as a virtue of the humble bundle. Yeah. So it feels a little bit like you're kind of selling out in a way. But where I disagree is the fact that the, the great thing about the humble bundle is that you don't have to pay THQ a cent. You can donate yeah. it all to charity. Right. So that's I mean that's what I did. I I read some articles about it and I was like, "You know what? I don't really know that I want to give money to THQ cuz they're they're hammered, you know, they're on the verge of bankruptcy. They've laid off a bunch of people. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to give the money all to charity." And that's what I did and I got the game. Yeah, and you have that choice, and that's fine. Like, but the wording he used in the article is what pissed me off. It was just like irreparably damaged the brand. Like, are you kidding me? When Humble Bundle Seven comes out in like February or March, it'll be the same shit, dude. It'll be DRM free, 
download the thing, get all the soundtracks, blah, blah, blah. Same thing. Well, and like, they've raised, as of this recording, over $3.2 million. So yeah. it's going pretty well. Yeah. Like, it, it really did make me, make me mad to see that article. Like, just... I see, I see what you're saying, and I see Ben Kuchera's less retarded way of saying it. <laughs> on, yeah. Ben Kuchera also Arcade. wrote an article about sort sort of agreeing with some of the points that Kyle Orland was making, um, but but I think he had a little bit he had he had better points. Yeah. So, yeah, Richard Stallman's a bit of a nut job though, Cummy Socks. I mean, I agree with a lot of Stallman stuff, but um, regardless. It's just <laughs> only don't write stuff. Only for, on it a was KB, a page of a KB Mod podcast could we be having intelligent interactions with someone named Cummy Socks in our chat. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> where else? It's very true. God damn it. It's very true. But really, uh, I think the, the takeaway from this yeah. is that you know it's another humble bundle, and the games the games are really good. I mean, it's high quality yeah. games that if you pay six dollars, you're getting seven games. Uh, you know that that were AAA at one time. I mean, Company of Heroes is pretty old, but that's a that's a quality game. Um, yeah. So if you, I would say, if you disagree with some of the ideals of THQ having a a humble bundle when THQ is not exactly a humble company, then just give the money to charity and be like, whatever, yep. I'll take these games. Thank you. Yeah, take these sweet games anyway, dude. Because, I mean, Saints Row will be on sale again on Steam sale on Christmas, but it'll be 10 bucks, so it'll be twice the price of this. Yeah. So, it's totally worth getting it, but don't support Kyle Orland. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, man, this is the so, new, this is the new uh, person. He's my new whipping boy. Yeah. Kyle Orland. All I right, guess we have to so, cancel his podcast appearance for next week. Yep, yeah. He's not, he's not going to be on. He's too busy reviewing some game for xbox 360 <laughs> and then not telling you for the whole article that he was playing too it busy xbox on that wii u coverage because that's what he loves to do <laughs> my review of black ops 2 oh yeah it was on the wii u in the last sentence like that's <laughs> like that is what he would do um so this next thing first of all when i saw this i was like this is batshit insane like this is i can't believe this is happening what is this high school like it's it all seems right like so high the school. war z the War Z, we've we've called it out as a bit of a sham before on this podcast, um, and basically said that John, everyone on this podcast has said, you know, support Rocket, support Daisy. It's going to be the better game anyway. And then we have this former developer. <laughs> no, 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 he's a for, he's a forum mod, not a developer. Oh, forum mod. Yeah, he he moderated. He's a, he's just basically a hardcore community member that they made a forum mod. So if it will ever load for me. <laughs> I got it up. So basically, he comes out on the forums and says that this whole game was basically a scam and that if they don't make enough money with the War Z after like six months or so, they'll just shut down all the forums and end the game. Like, that'll be it. So they're going to take the money and run, essentially, if it's not popular enough for them. Uh, If you couldn't see this was a money grab, first of all, from from like day one, dude, when this was announced, right when Day Z hit like a million players, all of a sudden, hey, it's the War Z. Really, really, I mean, this isn't surprising, but it's also like completely nuts. Um, <laughs> yeah, but Rohan, there's a little this smacks of shit anyway, man. Like <laughs> this, this is a real thing. This this game is a scam from day one. If you don't see that that and several other free to play games that are on the same site type of thing. Well, okay. To be so, fair, this ki- this guy obviously has a vendetta. His yeah. his forum account got hacked somehow, and and so someone went on a spree with his forum account, and I guess messed with a lot of stuff. And apparently, they don't keep backups of their forums, and they ended up banning his his game account. And so he came on this forum and and was basically sl- saying a bunch of stuff about how they ran like they randomly ban accounts with a certain amount of time spent playing because they know those people are hooked on the game and so it makes them rebuy the game. That's a, that's a pretty weighty accusation, and and that kind of thing sounds to me like someone who is trying to give someone yeah. else a bad name. So I don't, I mean. 
this guy does not seem like the most credible person. <clears throat> no. But I mean, so many, he says so many things in this post that I have to figure some of them are true. Like some of them seem pretty obvious saying that war Z is a direct port from war Inc. Yeah. With, oh, like, yeah. All you know how you, you find stuff. that out? You fucking look at the, you look at the game. I mean, yeah. the, <laughs> the models are the same. The environments are the same. There was a whole Reddit thread. A God bless our slash gaming fuck my ass sideways that i even mentioned that uh but one of the few <laughs> actual decent threads on there in the last year was the one where there were screenshot comparisons between i mean everything just totally rehashed they they went down the list and showed all the rehashed which is whatever it's made by the same company so they can do whatever the yeah the league want. of legends terms of service thing as well oh yeah where they copy copy the league right. terms of service yeah, that one exactly. and left like riot right. games in the fucking text and shit like that yeah. like if you're supporting this game, I don't even care if you enjoy it. Just stop. There's too much. Like, <laughs> even stop. if this guy, even if this guy is making up half of this, which seems kind of likely, half of it is probably true. And you're sitting here kind of buying into this. Like, you you should not be paying these people money. <laughs> like, just don't. Support Rocket when his game comes out. You know, the one that this is capitalizing off of. <laughs> Daisy, buy that one instead. Yeah, I mean um, everything that so far has been looks like a money grab, with the, which is what this guy is describing, which is uh, yeah is believable. Uh, but you're right, Brandon. I mean, this guy's credibility is uh, is is in question. Really not, he's yeah. he's angry. I mean, just, just, yeah, yeah, he's so it's angry like, when he's making this post. Right. Yep. And uh, <laughs> When, from we said this, what was it, beginning of October when the alpha started or something like that? We said, like, look at this game. I mean, to be fair, I was one gave... of the few people that was like, we should give this. No, you know what we talked about? I didn't say we should so much give it a chance, but the, the we had a debate about whether or not buying items for uh, like doing microtransactions for money Perfect. that disappear yeah. is a good yeah. idea or not. And I, and I thought that that wasn't a horrible idea. I thought it kind of raises the stakes, depending on what the prices are, if it's like 10 cents or something like that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, ev- everything since then has just been well, just Scott, a fucking you can drink. you can buy their legend package for Ooh. a limited time offer of sixty dollars. Yeah, you can yeah, you can exactly. be a part I, of the game forever and become dude, a legend. I want to become a legend, dude. I may buy it. I, I may buy. However, it. much like uh, much like our experience with Dino Beatdown, several big YouTubers <laughs> were given access to War Z. Yeah, and um, almost universally. We're, like, we're not too impressed. <laughs> so, also, War Inc. sucks. So, if it's a port of War Inc., it sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. War Inc., uh, well, yeah. Well, and and the, the thing that I, I mean, just, again, I'm looking at their website, and, and one of the <laughs> FAQs is, how are you guys making this game in only a year? And it starts off, well, we're not really developing from scratch. <laughs> Oh, well, the, the design and idea for the War Z has been in place for a couple of years. Yeah, it has been in place for a couple of years, just oh, not in your game. It's <laughs> been in another game that has been, you know, iterating and coming up with a lot of the things that your game is now taking on. So, I mean, it just the whole thing doesn't smell great to me. And this is one more thing, even though this guy doesn't seem all that believable, it, it's kind of like confirming things that I already thought. Right. So you yeah. can just apply your common Warzy? sense hat to to anything to make you hate yeah. the game more is probably good regardless of whether it's true <laughs> or not because <laughs> you ju- you should just hate it. I mean, that doesn't crop up. It's like yeah. if you ever look on Netflix, right? If the movie Cars comes out in a theater, within like three weeks of Cars coming out on Netflix, there's like a Chinese made animated yeah. movie called like automobiles yeah. that is what the war z is <laughs> that's it's the shit ass dick version of cars <laughs> that's what it is it's dude they're all over it because one time i came home from work right and my kid is watching some weird ass animated thing on netflix and i'm like megan what is he watching and she said it was the name is it was like toy story but it was a chinese animated ripoff <laughs> that's what it was awful it was awful it's the same thing it's the same thing. That's funny. So, moving on from that to some quick hits here. The uh, third round of Greenlight titles has been set, um, including Star Forge, a game we've highlighted before, which is kind of like crazy Minecraft, but with tower defense um, 
So that's pretty cool. There's also, uh, this Bob will be very excited. Euro Truck Simulator 2 has Damn. been greenlit. Um, <laughs> and several other games. Primordia I've heard of. Um, Kinetic Void I've heard of. Pretty much the rest of these I haven't heard of, to be honest. The travesty but... is that, that we won't get the first Euro Truck Simulator. <laughs> it's the travesty. <laughs> and uh, also, ooh, on the... On, the subject of releases, I can't believe they put this on here. Forge Bros is out Tuesday. Get it. It's good. Get Forge. Um, it will be worth your 20 bucks if you liked uh, MMO PvP at all. Get I think it. if you pre-order it, you actually get a second copy to give to someone. So Yeah. It's, yeah, basically so. $10 if you want to make your friend pay you for it. I just have him suck my dick and then I'll give it to him. <laughs> Wow, dude. I'm oh, sorry. Um, Not all transactions involve money. That's right. <laughs> but also, uh, Hotline Miami 2 was announced. It was originally going to be an expansion to Hotline Miami, but they said they just had too much content and decided to make a new game. So there you go. Um, love Hotline Miami. Look for it on Steam sales. Totally worth your 7 or 8 bucks or whatever to be on sale. Um, definitely get it. Uh, also, Binding of Isaac, again, coming out. A remake is being... Uh, created with 16-bit style graphics by Edmund McMillan with a whole new um, expansion's worth of extra content and new content. So, very cool. Yeah, Forge will be on Steam on Tuesday. Um, also, Super Hexagon hit Steam this week. If you like crazy high-score games like Geometry Wars and other games like that, you will like Super Hexagon. It's also insanely frustrating <laughs> and challenging um it was on xbox live first and it's it's come back out uh <clears throat> and also this new game has a little sort of trailer sort of gameplay trailer and this game is called energy hook um and it basically looks like mirror's edge cross with just cause 2 um but not like there doesn't seem to be any action like like guns and stuff it seems to more be the movement uh, I'll blink in chat, but it looks like if they, you know, polish up, this is obviously a very early uh, Kickstarter yeah, teaser. It's, it's this is the teaser for the Kickstarter. So early. it looks like Can a I, cool idea, though. Uh, yeah. And Can the, I just uh, say that this is a much better teaser trailer than, <laughs> than is, uh, what we were talking about <laughs> with Splash Damage? This has gameplay the, footage. This is actually teasing me. me. Even with the lack yeah. of leveling of the fucking dubstep they play in the trailer, it's just way too loud. <laughs> Uh, this is still like this was made in Windows Media uh, Maker, or whatever the fuck Windows Movie Maker. Uh, <laughs> it's still yeah, the gameplay's there, and I th the coolest part is like the wall running that happens in the uh, camera shift perspective when you swing over to a building. Yeah. That was really cool. Um, so you have like a rope made of energy, thus energy hook. It's like yeah. a Gatling hook. You can you know use physics to swing around. Um, it it looks really damn cool. I don't know what the point of it is going to be in the right. end. But, uh, yeah. Definitely looks like so, a tech demo, kind of. I mean, very early. The graphics look like shit, to be frank. And Yeah, uh, oh, it's super early. Super early, so it looks pretty cool. And now it's time for Twitter questions with the KB Mod Podcast. Um, at at Wacken3209, who is the biggest bro that you have met at an event? It can't be Jared Garretson. Has to be, Quiz. Has to be. He's a, I mean, were we talking bros? Is in bros or sweet dudes? <laughs> I think I think he means like bro swag. Bro swag. It has mm. to be Fwiz. Fwiz is a good kind of bro swag, but has to be Fwiz. Yeah, yeah. Fwiz is quite the bro. He's um, the good kind, though. Yeah. Rishi, Rishi on the ones and twos. Mm. Yeah, Rishi's yeah. pretty swaggerific as well. Yeah, pretty swaggerific. Um, Bobby Bowling in Seattle. Bobby Bowling entering the room, yeah. ushering his entourage in right of, <laughs> of other community managers. <laughs> but I don't, no, you didn't actually meet but, Robert Bowling, though. Does he even count? Well, his his presence was there. <laughs> the Bowling presence was felt. Um, <laughs> a little too close and a little too personal. But Fwiz was right next to him, so it was like... It was like a swagger bro bomb. I mean, it was crazy. So, uh, actually, 
I would say the coolest person I've ever met at one of the shows uh, was probably C Nanners, to be honest. Just a really, really good dude, Adam. Nice fellow. One of, one of the best dudes. Yeah. <clears throat> Bobby Kotick is a bro. <laughs> I haven't met Bobby Kotick at a show. <laughs> we tell him to listen to the podcast if we met. Yeah, exactly. So, up next. Two questions from at Aussie, (laughs) A-U-5-5-I-3, spelling Aussie in the leadest of ways. If you had to make a new name by rearranging the letters of your first name, what would your new name be? Actually, it's it's of your fist name, Dan. (laughs) Oh, my fist name. I don't know what that is. Is that the name you (laughs) give yourself while you're fisting yourself? Because I I would name (laughs) myself Sift. I would would be Mm. Sift. Mine yes. would be this. Sift. Mine would be Fitz. Koss. I'd probably be Fitz. <laughs> Koss. Koss. It'd be Koss with two T's because I'm fucking. Dude, you could be, that could be a rap name, dude. No, check it out, Scott. What? I'll put it in chat. This, this should be what All it right. is. What is. What is this? <laughs> oh, yeah, with the, yeah, with the money sign. Yeah, you gotta use the dollar yeah. sign. You're yeah. right. You're right. You can do like a song with two chains or something. Yeah, I would be able to. Good. <laughs> Oh my god. Actually, if I was using my first name, it would definitely be Nads, John York. <laughs> <laughs> Nads. I don't know. Yeah, my, has... my name's too long to really make anything that, Brandon, that no, even makes sense. Stuff. Here, hold on. Let's see. Brand. Yeah, let's take Brand. <laughs> Rand... Rand. Random, but there's no M, so that doesn't work. <laughs> it's just totally not even the thing. Uh, Rand Rand by be... Drabna. Brandon. B- Brandon. B- <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you just move the B. I feel like the chat will come up with something suffi- sufficiently horrendous. Uh, Dranbo is a good one, actually. <laughs> <laughs> BK Randy. Don Rabin. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Look at this. That's like Don Corneo from Final Fantasy yeah. Seven. I think Does you may Brandon be Mark Rust Rabin's Rust brother. <laughs> yeah, you might. I think we just discovered this. <laughs> Who asked this question? Look at that picture that somebody hard. just put in chat. <laughs> the imager. Yeah. The laughing man. <laughs> the apple fister. Oh, God. <laughs> so good. Oh, my God. So, oh yeah. next up is another question from Aussie. All-time favorite scene from a movie. Oh, man. Hmm. Scene. Favorite scene. Getting specific. It's difficult. That is difficult. Uh, can I say? Can I say all of Space Jam? Mm. <laughs> the entire. That is totally. That is totally. Accurate. My favorite scene from a movie is he's fixing a divot from Space Jam. So yes. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. He's fixing a divot. Oh God! Damn it's it. so <laughs> good. Um, uh, Ryan Gosling, all of the scenes. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, oh man. Uh, I'm partial Probably. to uh, the rape scene yeah. at the Clockwork Orange, one of my favorites. Oh, God. Uh, I thought you were going to say the rape scene in Irreversible. Because oh. then I'd be like, you are a sick motherfucker. Oh. Please get out. Of all. Um, <clears throat> one of my favorite scenes in the movie ever is actually a super fucked up scene. If you guys have ever seen Old Boy, either in stream or, or in here. Old Boy, when uh, the big plot twist of the movie happens and he cuts out his own tongue. That is a an awesome scene. Spoilers. Fucked Thanks. Up. Oh, I didn't. I didn't spoiler it. Somebody in chat, I'm sure, will. But I, <laughs> I didn't spoiler it. Um, old boy is amazing though. The rape scene in Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. God no. Oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Enter the void. Oh man. So pretty much any scene that- in Dumb and Dumber. Classic. <laughs> Yeah, Big gulps, huh? Yep, exactly. <laughs> see you later. Well, your skis? See you later. <laughs> Both of them. <laughs> Both of them. <laughs> oh my god. Pretty bird. Pretty bird. <laughs> Every scene with Christina Hendricks also a really, mm. really good answer. Um any scene in human centipede. Uh nice hooter she so got there. <laughs> This next question is from uh, 
at yummy man ass, mm. which always comes up with some good ones. If your scrotum was an <laughs> '80s hair metal band, what band would it be? And the obvious answer here is White Snake. <laughs> yes. Are, are we talking about Bob or who are we talking about now? The scrotum. That would be Bob's. I would. I would agree with White Snake's the only real answer. <laughs> Mine would be Poison for sure. <laughs> Mainly because if you smoked my pubic area, you would be fucking. You would have to be sent to the hospital, and uh, poison control would have to get a hold of you. Dio, Ronnie James Dio. Oh my god, <laughs> Def Leppard. Yeah, Ronnie Dio. James Dio does look a bit like a scrotum. Yeah, did R.I.P. Dio. R. I. P. Mega Death. That's not a. Well, it's an '80s hair metal. It's band. not really. No. It's not really Mega hair metal. metal but it's not it's hair, hair metal. metal. No, it's more like heavy metal, bros. Yeah, <laughs> or what they called heavy metal then? Anthrax. Yeah. Mm. Anthrax. Maybe, maybe Twisted Sister. <laughs> oh, Twisted Sister. That, yeah. just, that, has... that could be twisted in so many ways. Brandon, please take that back. <laughs> twisted <laughs> Skid Row. Skid Row. <laughs> oh man. Rat is also a good answer. Um, <laughs> mine is Journey because I don't shave them. <laughs> Uh, I think pretty much any any band sound. I mean, hair, '80s hair metal bands all had such ridiculous names. Yeah, that is true. Guar is not a hair metal band at all. <laughs> Guar is, Heart is, is a good answer. Band. Yeah, Heart is a good answer because it's two chicks, mm-hmm. and then and then I could have the the Wilson sisters on my balls all the time. So that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, that could be good. Though now, I don't know if you want them on your balls. Maybe in their prime, I feel like. That's true. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> All right, this next question is from Big Dean XD, apparently a Redditor. Um, XD. <laughs> how could I convince my friend that PC gaming is superior? Just show him a Steam sale. Mm, yeah, it's a good way yeah, to do it. Show, show, him, show him the THQ Humble Bundle. Yeah. Ask him where he's going to get those games on Xbox. Show him the article from uh, Dan's favorite person. Uh, what's his name again? Kyle Orland? Yeah, show him a Kyle Orland article. I'm sure he'll... And then egg Kyle Orland's house with the friend. <laughs> yeah. be like, this is what PC gamers do, dude. That's right. That's great. <laughs> you could Actually, you could point him to all of Kyle Orland's reviews because you'll never know if they're on PC or not until mm-hmm. the end of the article. I tell so, you what, load up, load up any free-to-play game. <laughs> and then get him hooked on it, and, and he's going to ask you how much it costs, and you're going to say nothing. That's true. Take him to GameStop. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> he'll fucking he'll repent of his sins. Um, or actually, you could just show him that artwork, the PC Gaming Master. Yeah, yeah which is my desktop background still right now. <laughs> it's fucking looking at me. Oh, it's so good. I just changed it to some yeah. fan-made BLR background, which is awesome. Nice. But, uh... Yeah, I had Gabe, and my wife comes out there, she's like, what in the hell is on your computer? Uh, There's a fat man in a leotard yeah. with several other fat men. How, or... does, how does she not know Gabe, and your wife should know Gabe? Yeah, you gotta you gotta teach her about that, man. The last game she played extensively was Diablo 2. Hmm. I bet your son knows Gabe. He might. <laughs> Dan makes him worship at that wallpaper. He lights candles and tells, uh, tells Hunter to chill out. Say your prayers for Half-Life 3. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah steam sale i think is the best way because then you just that that humble bundle alone is a really good idea though because it's like yeah. here's two games that are like between 30 and 60 dollars on console yeah. and you can get them for five dollars and 64 cents yeah when you really so, when you really sit down and think about it you make up all the money from building your PC. I mean, you make back all that money with sales, you know, 30, 30, 40 bucks at a time. Yep. You really do. So at KD Zen, this is a question for Scott at KD Zen 18. When can we expect the based APL, a based Christmas album to be released? Oh, wow. Christmas we have. Okay. I didn't realize. Um, I don't know. That's, that's a good question. I will, uh, I will start working on that request ASAP though. Maybe, <laughs> maybe not for this Christmas, but maybe for next uh, I feel like this could actually be comedy. Gold. No, it could actually. It definitely is. It's a possibility. <laughs> I hadn't really thought about it, but tis the season 
for, uh, for stuff like this. So we'll see what happens. I do know that <laughs> there is someone that runs an APL Fisher Vivo channel, which is, I do not run. Uh, <laughs> and they comment on all of those wraps. And uh, there's the full mixtape on APL Fisher Vivo for people that always are like, there needs to be a mixtape. This gentleman put one together. So apparently he said one more song and there's going to be another mixtape. So you guys can go check that out. You could be like Lil B and release a mixtape every fucking day. I know. Well, you'd have Rare to, cooking music. You'd have to have 20, 20 songs a day to put out the amount of content that, that dude does. So Next thing you know, he's going to start filing takedown requests against your videos. <laughs> he will. He will. I'm going to get, I'm gonna get in trouble. So, uh, this next question from Nicholas Narsa. I felt like I almost needed more time to think about it, but it is an interesting situation if I was to be put in it, given that I am a small man and would not be raping anyone in mm. prison. But still, uh, what would be your catchphrase in prison towards every man you're going to rape? So you're about to rape this dude and you have like a line that's famous in the prison. What is it? Here comes oh, yeah. Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, all right. Uh, uh I don't know, man. I think maybe... like Scott's Scott's a big dude, so he could do some raping. Bend over, like... and touch your toes. I'm gonna show you where the wild thing goes. <laughs> <laughs> that works. It's kind of whimsical, and it's kind of like it's gonna take their mind off the fact I'm about what to enter them. What kind of a voice? What kind of a voice would you say? Yeah, in? <laughs> you would have to do it within like a sing songy voice. I don't know. <laughs> I think you do. You do the Keenan and Kel voice. You all hear it goes. <laughs> oh here oh. goes oh, okay. <laughs> the laughing man with what you feel just like my sister oh, oh. 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 no oh um, no. gone too far they call me lord intimate i like that <laughs> they call me lord intimate <laughs> <laughs> oh let's get oh man I don't have a line. I would be doing no raping. No. This is not a situation I've thought about, and I I would do no raping. Let's get ready to rumble. Is pretty. Here comes the pain train. There's some good <laughs> I want oh, people, man. You know, with... Some call me this. Some people call me the space cowboy. <laughs> right as you... Bam. You vacant? <laughs> question mark? <laughs> I'm a little oh. bit concerned with how, how many people in chat have had good answers to this. Yeah, like like it's just been... Uh... Well, when I was in prison, wow. this is the line I used. <laughs> <laughs> Who's ready to go to downtown pound town? That's a good one. <laughs> to infinity and beyond. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I am Gotham's reckoning. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh god! <laughs> Slam tarts fitting his own name into that oh, one. Oh yeah, doing... are your tarts ready? <laughs> they about to be. They about... they about to be slammed. <laughs> All right, next up, we have uh, at D Kuzak asking. <laughs> so I, I I thought this was kind of close to one of our awards, but we'll we'll let this question go. What is your most regretted video game purchase of the year? Of 2012, and I said this was hard, yeah. Brandon, because. There was no Brink or Modern Warfare 3 for me this year. There was no just yeah. horrifically terrible game that I spent money on. That's the that's so. the kicker too, spent that we spent money on. There have been some there have been some regrettable games as far as what we've played, but purchase. Actually that is a good good one up marker at pre patch T three. Yeah, um, that would probably be it. But can you yeah. say that now though? Given that the state the game is in now, no, does that stand as your no. most regretted no. video game purchase? Um, hmm. Actually, I would have to say, if I really had to pick one out for this year in particular, um, I would have to say BF3. Yeah. Um, Did you ever actually get though, it? I didn't even know yeah, I have that. It, that's a good have, point. I'd probably say that too. I have it and close quarters, and I bought it this year. I did buy, I did buy part of it, dude. K nine bought the other part, but I bought part of it, and I still would say, like, it's a good game, but it's like, I don't know. It's, I would say that would be it, just simply because it's a big AAA title, and I feel like I should have played it more. But yeah. the, no, like. Here's a weird yeah. one that people are going to hate me for, uh, and it's because it's also kind of like an indie game. But um, 
the is it medieval combat or what is what is chivalry? Chivalry? chivalry chivalry now i say that the game's not bad or anything but the mechanics like uh the mechanic like the story it just gets for me it got old after like two hours i was kind of like to be fair i wasn't very good at it so if i stuck with it more i just uh i think it's you're cool. not regretting uh you're not regretting terra uh terra i uh, had fun with terra for the month i played it uh, i don't know <laughs> yeah, I look at everyone's like, oh my god, I can't believe it. It's uh, a <laughs> chivalry respect woman simulator 2012. <laughs> yeah, that game was a piece of shit, to be honest. Um, yeah, but no, I mean, it's, it's, oh, it's cool. I just, Nexus. it's one of those Nexus games that's fun with your friends. Answer. If you're playing by yourself, I don't know how, how long you would play it. So. Yeah, Nexus is a good answer. I think I picked um, up Nexus for a dollar or something, so I, I actually didn't. don't I don't regret that purchase because I will buy just about anything on Steam for a dollar just so that my game library goes up by one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you guys are right. But, In retrospect, Terra was the most foolish purchase I made. I don't know if it was yeah. the worst. You don't regret it. I don't regret it. Well, yeah, you know what? I do regret it, it, but that's my own fault. I don't regret it for the game's sake. I regret it for my... I bought Nexus pre-order for 9 bucks because I was like, this will actually be somewhat fun. It'll be a little fast-paced I shooter. I got it for free. Thank you, based Shore Wars. <laughs> and then it didn't run very well, and and like then it they couldn't find a server, and then... So I would say Nexus is probably the one that I spent money on that I regret the most. BF3, close. Yeah, I think I, I'd have to say BF3. Not that it's it's not a bad game. It's just that I think I was, because I loved Bad Company 2 so much, I was really excited for BF3. And then just the, kind of the way it panned out, I didn't end up playing it that much. And to this day, I really haven't played it much since since that first Frenzy after it released. And, you know, I paid full price for it. So that that may be my most regretted one just because, you know, $60. And I definitely, going back to, to last week or the week before when we were talking about, like, time spent per Yeah, dollar, but I bought it this year. That was, I bought it this year, Keyboard Ninja. So Yeah. But, I don't, yeah. Uh, it was a last year's game. They have a point about BF3. But oh, that's right. I, God. It doesn't even count for this year. It counts for me because I bought it this oh. year. Oh. <laughs> Killing um me. now Dino Beatdown, the reason we didn't several we, of us we didn't, didn't buy Dino say that Beatdown. we didn't buy it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't buy it. We have it, but we didn't buy it. Um I'll so. say I'll add up because BF three was actually last year, so I'll say I'll say one of the more regretted purchases for me was kind of Arma two because I bought it just to play Day Z. Mm. And yeah. I love Daisy, so I don't really regret Arma 2, but like I'm never gonna play Arma 2. Oh, yeah, and I spent, you know, Arma like 30, 30 or 40 <laughs> bucks on it. So I kinda regret having to own that just to play Daisy. Yeah. So Guild Wars 2, I'm surprised well, I'm not surprised that none of us said that. Nick, if Nick Fenton was here, that would be Nick Fenton's. So I would, sure. I don't say Guild Wars 2 yet because it's I mean, I have it forever. And I can go back to it whenever I want, so Rohan, you do realize how niche Arma 2 is, like, as a product. Yeah. I mean, like, saying Daisy ruined it is, like, very short sighted. Like, you can still play Arma 2 vanilla. Ask and the same 18 people, ask the same 18 people, the same 18 people, how, still much, play. Uh, how much Arma ruined <laughs> or Daisy ruined Arma. Like, it is one of the most niche games. The ever. same 18 like, people a... are still playing Arma 2. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In fact, you might be up to 24 players now because of Daisy, so. <laughs> uh all right this this next question is from at macintooch <laughs> which is what the mac should have been called <laughs> not macintosh um did you play any sports as a kid if so which was your favorites um i played in high school i played varsity tennis for four years and that was the only sport i played like for school but i played hockey from like 12 to 25 <laughs> just roller hockey um then when you hit 50 you really slowed down on the hockey wow dude yeah. wow <laughs> dude actually when my shoulder kept popping out every ah. time i played when I, <laughs> that's when that kind of ended um but yeah i still wish i played tennis but i have like nobody to play tennis with here um, me and the wifey still play tennis once in a while love tennis great sport to play um i played but people's sports <laughs> yeah. Uh, when I was younger, yeah, I played uh, basketball. I played baseball. I didn't really play much in high school. I played a little stint of football in high school, but I moved around a lot during high school, so I never settled anywhere. 
yeah. uh, during that time, so I didn't really get an opportunity to play much. Um, yeah, those those three. What were my favorites? Um, I mean, I don't know. I was a I was a really good soccer player. I was yeah. on the Olympic development team, and you know, got into college because of soccer. And Flips I on. and I wrestled as well, but my favorite sport was roller hockey. Yep. I always wished I could have played ice hockey, but it was so expensive. <laughs> I was never able to. Mm. I played soccer as a kid, and then I played a little bit of basketball. Not good at either, so I stopped playing. Did you play any sports in high school? Me? No, I was a nerd. Nice. I played. You know right. what? I, you know what sport I played in high school? World of Warcraft. That's what I played. Yeah. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> number one. Yeah. Number one. Rogue on Firestone. <laughs> but yeah, I. I played tennis. Tennis was the sport in my high school that you played if you didn't have anything else to do. <laughs> like, like in PA, uh, John, did you play in high school, like varsity of tennis, or you just no, played soccer? I just, I just like, played tennis, like, casually for fun. I never um, I played it. But, I played at the country club, if you want to get all yuppie. If you're not, <laughs> yeah, if you're not, uh, if you weren't, like, a serious high school about it, then basically your entire team was just there for like the county team tournament and that was it like because after the county level everything was individual so if your team didn't have anybody stand out there was really no point to your tennis team actually existing so everybody who just wanted to play a sport for the fuck of it in high school played like all my friends played tennis because we're like yeah just come hang out and play tennis (laughs) because like that was it it was very informal even though it was a formal team so but uh yeah yeah, the tennis team was for casuals, is essentially what I'm saying, <laughs> at, at my high school. Um, but, yeah, so it was pretty fun. There you go. Uh, this last question is from at Malblood. Do you think YouTube and Twitter, slash, I guess we could do, do social media, is possibly affecting the creation of games, slash, shaping them post-release? Yes. Yes. That's all that needs but to be they, said. There's really no re- no even reason to dig into that because it's a fact that yes, social media affects games greatly. Yep. And and minus some large, large, large AAA titles, such as the Call of Duty franchise would be a really good example. Um, you often see player suggestions getting into games now. Uh, or organized... Mm, I organized think it all depends. Games. I still think YouTubers think they have way more clout than they oh, do. No. In see, see, yeah, but you're 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 seriously referring to the Call of Duty community specifically oh, when you say that. Yeah, that's true. Really are, because no other community does what the Call of Duty kids do. Like nobody does that. True. Nerf us! No one has it's mental terrible. breakdowns on Twitter every day about uh, yeah. their fucking community, like the Call of Duty community. It makes me want to sometimes just. Yeah, you don't see you don't see Minecraft players. Fix the, you know, yeah. You don't see that, or to like, um, like Skyrim dudes who do like a <laughs> let's play Skyrim or something. Fix this, Bethesda, you motherfuckers. Yeah. No, it never happens. <laughs> there's a there's a certain Twitter account uh, that I won't name that retweets people I don't follow, and it's enough for me to just sometimes I can't, <laughs> I just can't anymore. So yeah, I mean, I agree. I think maybe in some ways it shapes. It also depends on the the popularity of the game, right? Like. The Call of Duty community uh, is a much more diehard, like, try-hard community. And what represents how much of the actual casual population that plays Call of Duty? Very little. Like, very small. Like, maybe, like, point-something percent. Uh, well, it's like... Well, so that's, the, that's the, but that's the question, Scott, is do you think right. it's... Po- do you think social media is positively affecting the creation of those games? Positively? Uh... God, it all it depends. It's, it's, it you all. can't say yes or no. It it all depends. I'm sure there's negative and positive aspects. It's it's too I think on games like uh so that's a big game, but like on smaller games, I think it definitely helps. Obviously it helps spread the word and also I'm sure uh maybe development angles and stuff that smaller games or indie games and stuff like that, they'll go to YouTubers to promote that can help. That might help. You think about action. about Blacklight, like Yeah. yeah those guys true. at a certain point, yeah. Zombie genuinely started listening to like Zero Armada. Um, about game decisions, like not not that they're taking everything he said and implementing it, yeah. but there was like, well, this is broken, and like it really, really is broken, <laughs> and you know he would provide video proof and like, but you don't see people in other communities outside of Call of Duty just going off the fucking rails 
on social media and just like yeah you know <laughs> like if something is broken in daisy someone will probably post on the daisy forums rocket this is broken can you take right. a look right and he might actually answer <laughs> go I, yeah i'll fix that mm, you know yeah i guess one thing that uh that youtube has done is taken that kind of feedback uh where it can be broken like in a forum post that's kind of taken it depends on the game that, that still obviously exists but it's kind of given a platform for sometimes people that don't think things out very clearly and can just make a <laughs> knee-jerk reaction video to something gives them a lot more opportunity to do stuff like that so it's interesting i don't know man it's uh i i, I hate this question i hate it <laughs> i just fucking well i think it's in the i think it's, uh, here, right? it's too early to say i think it's too early to say let's give it really? time. i don't know if yeah. i can say for sure i i, I would say go ahead go ahead no, no you can. <laughs> I, would, I would say I would say it's a more I would agree with John. It's overall I would say it's a positive thing. Because most yeah. of the time if it's negative, it's nonsensical on the internet. Like a lot of the time. Like if people are flying off the rails about a game, it's not gonna affect that game anyway. Like, and dev no dev worth their salt is gonna make right. knee jerk decisions off some dude going, Retweet this. Right, exactly. And there you have nailed what my frustration is, is that 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 kind of thing that happens but it happens a lot. I mean obviously we are hyper focused on it because we're in this community and so we see we see that all the time. Uh mm-hmm. but just the, the the brand of stupidity of the people that perpetuate that stuff like, hey everyone retweet so that there's no more quick scoping in Call of Duty. But these aren't like these aren't twelve year old children. These are like fucking grown men who go to work. <laughs> They're grown men. They're grown men in quotations that go that go to work. Like I just am like, oh my god! Like please do not judge us based on the actions of. Not that I'm like part of the Call of Duty community anymore because I could give a shit to be honest. But um, it's just that that is what irks squarely me. in the legal. So end. that's what this question reminds me of. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not even in that. Community I mean, that, I think that's that's one way to look at it. But I I look at this question and I would say there are positive aspects. I, sure. I would say it's overwhelmingly positive, mainly because I think it. Uh, I'm looking at it mainly in the last part of his question about shaping games post release. I think that stuff like YouTube and Twitter helps helps a lot in finding finding ways that the game can either evolve. Or things that need to be fixed, and and Twitter yeah. allow. I mean, you know, game devs have forums and stuff for people to give feedback and and make posts about stuff they think is imbalanced or or whatever. But it's a lot easier to just be like, oh, I have a Twitter account. I'll tweet at them and be like, I you know, I get killed all the time with the sniper rifle or something. And maybe that's just your one experience, but maybe they read that. And they actually go look at the stats and like, wow, people are getting destroyed by this one sniper rifle. We need to fix this imbalance. And I don't know. I think it's just getting a lot more direct feedback from the people that play your game, I think, can only be a good thing. Because you're going to have dumb people. You're going to have people telling you things that are uninformed. But I think you, you, know, you, you weed out the noise and you're getting a lot of good unfiltered feedback then, that can shape a game you know, once, once it's released. Yeah, that's all depends. That all depends. I agree overall. In a perfect world. 420, John just smoke. It depends. Yeah, it depends. Yeah, Yeah, you're right. In a perfect world, that would be the situation. I I think. I think Scott uh, just has this, like, he's thinking of one personal scenario. I'm not thinking of one. No, I'm not. (laughs) I really am not just thinking of one person. I'm just thinking in, in general, but that's just part of, that's, that's more the YouTube side. I think, that's why I'm saying I think uh, I think it dev it does definitely help uh, in the creation of games and shaping them post release for smaller titles like Blacklight, which has actually done really well now and maybe not considered a smaller title anymore. Actually, uh, I, I'd agree with that because for that kind get, of stuff, when you get large like the Call of Duties and and Battlefield threes, yeah. there are so many people you know tweeting and stuff and just saying things about the game that you probably can't even really digest all of that. Right. Whereas people like the smaller devs, like Zombie and High Res and stuff, you know, they don't get so much, so many tweets and that kind of thing that they can't actually read them. So yeah, I right. I agree with that. Yeah. I think it helps smaller games more. Yeah. So. All right. Well, Gosh. that that is it, folks. Gosh. Two weeks from today, uh, awards show extravaganza Memorial Bash, 2012, December 16th, Sunday night. Yes. Uh, we'll reveal our award winners for this year, um, all of which will be aligned on a beatdown. And so I just saved you spoilers. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, sorry guys. Dude. We got, um, you know, 
even though we bash on the game, they just sent us. A, we got a check for ten thousand dollars, and uh, we're gonna be winning all the awards. So, so uh, this week, upcoming on the site, we're gonna have the rest of APL Fisher's eerie playthrough coming up. Um, watch a man fall apart one episode at a time. Oh God! <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, we're also uh, gonna have the new build guides for this month up this week. And a little uh, tech guide from Hex on how to install Windows off a USB drive uh, will also be up. So that is it for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I do not think there's going to be a post-show as I have to do build guides tonight. I'm going to put them together tonight. Um, I don't know what Chaz is doing. Probably balls deep, though. So he probably won't be post-streaming. So thank you guys so much. My show will be on tomorrow night. Make sure to follow us at KB Mod Gaming and at all our personal Twitters, which you can find all over the interwebs. We will uh, see you next Sunday night. Thanks for coming out. Yeah, we will. All right. Bye. See you guys.